going on, everyone? And welcome back to another season preview edition of the NL Flash. My name is Tino Farah. And once again, back for another episode is Mr. Teddy Jenner of TSN and Lacrosse Flash. But before we get there, we should, I guess, mention the team we're going to be previewing, and that will be the Buffalo Bandits coming off of a season where they yet again lost in the finals, unfortunately for them. But Teddy, before we get too far into that, how are you doing this evening? Uh, I'm great. Uh, things are good. Rocking the old Ireland lacrosse shirt, bringing out the green in the eyes as we head to the holiday season. Uh, what are we, a, a week away, not even, uh, before the opening games of the NL season. And it's been a long time coming. Seems like only yesterday that the Mammoth and Bandits went toe-to-toe in that incredible NLL finals and uh, looking forward to get back into the booth. So things have been good, man. Very good. Yeah. And we're just counting down the the days, count down the hours even. But uh, yeah, let's get into the bandits, shall we? And like I mentioned before, back to back finals and no championship to show for mm-hmm. it. Um, again, sort of like in that same category as Colorado, it's kind of hard to decide what you're going to do to change things up in the offseason. But in your opinion, Teddy, what was their biggest move of the offseason? That's a tough one because when I talked to John Tavares at the draft, he he was adamant they needed some more size and a little more toughness, and they got that through the draft with Dylan Robinson and Cam Wires. But they're not going to have probably have those guys for most of the year. Robinson's probably a bit uh, of a practice project for a little while. But they went out and got Greg Carnett. They went and got uh, Dan or Dave Brock, the Brockett ship. Uh, so they added some veteran toughness in size. So I don't know if that is going to push them over the hump. They really stayed status quo. Um, They made sure they got Dane Smith locked up. You know, I honestly, I think the biggest move is a loss, and that's losing Connor Fields. Um, And I know Connor wasn't happy uh, about being left unprotected in the draft, and now he's in Rochester, but that just kind of opens the door for a guy like Brad McCulley to maybe really step in and, and show the bandits what he's got. So, I don't really think they did a whole lot to to merit one standout move. I think they just kept that ship going straight. They restructured some things, added some veterans on the back end, and and we'll see how it plays out. But this is definitely a team that is going to come out pretty pissed off for that first week all across. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And we've already mentioned it a few times in this episode about them, you know, back to back trips to the championship and no trophy to show for it. And I think that's going to be a storyline that we're going to be hearing about throughout this entire season. And I honestly think we might see the most motivated Buffalo group that we've ever seen. So in your opinion, Teddy, what has to happen for Buffalo to be able to get over that hump and finally win a championship? Yeah, I think this is a team that, that just, they understand how to win and they understand what it takes here. They just haven't really gotten a few bounces late in games to help them finally lift that cup. And, you know, this is a group that has been together for maybe three or four years now, going back pre-COVID. And I don't want to say the window's closing, but it's getting to a point where if they keep faltering, that they're going to have to kind of really change things up. So I, I truly believe that this might be a year where they really kind of go all in. And sure, they haven't made a lot of moves, but If they're going to get over the hump, they just have to have everybody buy in for 18 games plus the playoffs. They can't have any passengers. They got to stay healthy. They need Matt Vince to just be unreal as he tends to always be. I don't think they can ask much more Dane Smith. I just think they need to be more consistent in those final pushes of games. You know, they had Colorado in game two. They let them back into that game. And then they just didn't have any momentum in game three. So, uh, this is a team that, that is going to be pissed off, like I said. And I, I think they have the horses to do it. I, I really think that Buffalo wins it this year. And if they can pull it off, I do think we see some changes. But I don't think they have to put too much pressure on themselves. I don't think it's a, hey, we have to win now kind of thing. Or if we don't win, it's all over. But I think we're going to see a team that is in championship form right from the get-go. Teddy, our friends over at Cool Bet released their odds for the 2023 NL Championship, and Buffalo comes in tied for the third best odds with Colorado at plus 750. Mm-hmm. If I were to give you my debit card, are you going to sprinkle some money on them? Yeah, I'd probably sprinkle a bit here or there because you got a lot of money, Tino. So I'm gladly going to take it. But like I said, I think I, I I have my early prediction of Buffalo winning this year just because I think there's a lot to be said for a group that has been spurred twice. And, um, 
when you look at this group and you look at their coaching staff and you look at their upper management and you look at where this team has been over the last few years, they're destined. And I really think it, it's, it's their time. They really, I, I don't want to say a team deserves to win, but those guys have absolutely put in a ton of work to get themselves to back-to-back championships. So um, I think the fellows at cool bet did an excellent job kind of putting them where they are. Obviously, you know, if I'm going to use your money, I'm going to sprinkle a little. If I'm going to use my money, I'm probably going to sprinkle a little more. I think Buffalo is is going to be one of the teams to beat, especially in a very competitive Eastern Division. Teddy, I don't know where you're getting this information about my uh, my bank accounts, but you're uh, I know you're who very... you work for. Aside from Lacrosse <laughs> Flash, he, he he is a very very generous man. Well, you might be a little disappointed when you go to check out a cool bet, but <laughs> regardless, uh, Teddy, thank you very much for joining us for another episode, another preview edition of the NL Flash. On behalf of Teddy and myself, Tino Farah, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.